Rid him up, reggae bass lovers. Welcome to the Reggae Bass Hub with me, Don Chandler, aka Don Instrumental. Now today's video is going to be slightly different from my normal videos, uh, where you're used to some tutorial and bass analysis stuff. Today's video is all about this thing. This is the Donna DPB1, kindly sent to me by those beautiful people at Donna and Donna what a beautiful name for a bass they've asked me to review this and yes this is a sponsored video by Donna but I will be giving my truthful thoughts on this review and if this is something that you like there will be links in the description where you can get a discounted price on this bass I think it's around about 15% or something like that as this is a channel dedicated to reggae bass this review will be delivered from a reggae bass player's perspective. Going back to my tone video, you may recall me telling you, you don't need an expensive bass for a good reggae sound. Now this bass costs 139 pounds. Yes, you heard correctly, 139 pounds, which is 185 dollars, 170 euros. And is it possible for a bass that cheap to have a good sound? That is what we are about to find out. Now, first thing, this is not going to be one of those surprise unboxing videos. As you can see, I've already got the bass in my hand, so it's no surprise. I wanted the bass to be comparable to the bass I normally play. So, as you guys know, I usually play with flat wound strings. So the first thing I did was I strung this with some flats. And this is where I came across my first problem because I just took the flats off another bass that was already knocking around in the studio and it's one of those basses that have the tuning peg here so when I put the flats on this bass E, A, D string were fine but the G string was too short as the G string usually comes up here I'm guessing that whoever strung the other bass which wasn't me um, probably cut the strings so I ended up putting the original G string back on this bass. So it had three flat rounds and one round round string. So to get this feeling like one of my regular basses, the first thing I wanted to do was get the action and the feel. Just feeling like one of my regular basses. So after changing the strings, I had to adjust the action as it was a little bit high. I found my regular tune in key and this is where I came across my first problem. And as I said, I was going to be honest with my review. This was going to be the first negative thing that I wanted to speak about. So adjusting the saddle here, I noticed that this key fit in all of these perfectly until I came to the very last one on the G string where the key just went round in circles as if it doesn't fit. So I thought, aha, don't know I've got you got the first negative thing. So something told me to reach into the gig bag, which comes with this bass. Reach over and let you guys see, it comes with this gig bag, very nice gig bag. And in the pocket of the gig bag is cable. and some tuning keys. So I thought before I give the first thumbs down on the Allen key, I'm gonna double check with the Allen key that comes with the bass. So, fit into all of these correctly as it should. And when it got to the culprit, which was the G string saddle, Turn it and it's absolutely fine. So the problem was actually my Allen key and nothing to do with the actual Donna saddle. So after changing these strings, I thought let me just give the bass a general play, just check in for any dead spots, something I would do with any bass guitar, any new bass guitar. So I'll just pretty cool to me.
quite an even sound across the bass. And, you know, just doing a general check over the bass, it does not feel like a cheap bass guitar. You know, checking the knobs, you know, I've taught in schools where they've always got that cheap bass guitar knocking around in the corner. And, you know, you go to turn one of the knobs and knob comes flying off or grabs one of the tuning pegs and the tuning pegs fall apart. But this just feels, feels really good. So the volume knob, absolutely fine. You know, the, the bridge looks like the typical bridge you find on the usual P bass pickups. Everything's really nice. The, the feel of the neck is absolutely beautiful. I'm guessing this is maple. I don't think it's a rosewood fretboard, but whatever it is, it's very nice. Sometimes on cheaper end bases, you get these sharp ridges on coming off the frets, but these feel feel really good. So far, so good. Nothing to complain about with this bass. Just general feel, really good. Now, because this is a reggae channel, I will not be using much of this stuff at all, but I'll let you hear what it sounds like with the tone knob turned on. I'm not all of a sudden gonna start getting all, all funky just because I've got this review to do. Now that's what it sounds like with the tone knob on, which I will not be using. You're going fully off. Now to take this bass for a proper test drive, what I'm going to do is play for you. Now, as you know, we've recently lost one of our greatest bass players, one of the greatest of all time, Robbie Shakespeare. So I thought as a dedication to Robbie, I'm going to take one of Robbie's bass lines to test out this bass. Now we know Robbie can go from the simplest of the simplest bass lines to some very intricate bass lines. So the bass line I'm going to look at is Wild World by Maxi Priest, produced by Sly and Robbie. But it's where Robbie gets a little bit busier and because I'm going to avoid using this round, round G-string, G I can cover some mileage on this fretboard playing this particular bass line. Let's give it a try and see what it sounds like. So with the power of technology, I've gone back and listened to this bass just so that I can give you guys my thoughts on the actual sound of the bass before I wrap up the video. So I had to go back and remove a little bit of the top end and the mid range, which I don't usually have to do so much with my other bass in my other videos. I usually just leave it set as it is. P's generally are quite pokeying the mid range department. So I had to ease out some of the top and some of the mid range. And, and my general thoughts on the sound, Sounds pretty good for 139 pounds. I think it's a great sounding bass. I think any beginner would not be going wrong by purchasing one of these. So the big question, would I play one of these on a gig or would I record with one of these? 100% yes. Would I recommend it as a bass for one of you guys to go and check out? 100% yes. Uh, I think Donna have done a great job in bringing the price down but still delivering the goods i don't know how or what they've done but it is a great sounding a great feeling 
there's nothing negative I can really say about this base. So if you really don't have the budget to be up in that 200, 300, maybe 400 low, low end bases, then you cannot go wrong with this 139 pound base. So if you like what you've seen and what you've heard, the links are in the description below. Check it out. As usual, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. And keep your eyes peeled because I have some great resources coming very soon for the Reggae Base Hub. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.